right, welcome to a show about notebooks, specifically the Midori MD A5 Grid Notebook. I'm very excited for this one. This is very exciting for me. I've been using a lot of these hardcover ones for the past couple of years, uh, and I've been looking for something different. So let's let's jump right into it. I want to first say that it's it's very Japanese. It even comes with this like thin, feels like rice paper. I'm not really sure if I should keep it or remove it before I start using it long term. But I like that it's wrapped in that. I kind of like the feel of it not being hardcover. You know, sometimes, like hardcover is obviously very nice. It protects the paper, but it's just nice to hold the paper itself and not have to worry about, you know, kind of how thick it is. Sold separately, you can buy um, a reusable hardcover and you kind of just slip this on. That's a few really like this and you're committing to Midori long term, which contemplating it right now, it's pretty nice. So this notebook contains less paper than some of these other ones over here. So like for example, this Loistrom one has, how many pages does it have? 251 pages. This Midori one only has 176. That's a lot fewer pages. However, the kind of the squares they use is actually, it feels smaller. So it might actually force you to write smaller. Therefore, you might end up with the same word count, depending on how you use it. It opens very nice. It is thread, stitch, and reinforced with a cheesecloth. So that just makes opening it flat so much easier than a hardcover one which is a big plus for me. So the paper is cream colored and it's famous for being bleed resistant, feather resistant, and just really good with fountain pens. That is something we're gonna find out about a little later. So stay tuned for that. In terms of additional features, it does come with this little, little, little adorable little ribbon. So cute. It's everything about this notebook is very cute. Thank you. Thank you, Japan. Um, so yeah, it's so very thin. I can't even, I, I can't even deal with it. It doesn't have any page numbers and it also doesn't have that retractable pocket at the end that you usually get with um, hardcover notebooks. So nothing like that. However, it does come with this uh, little sticker here. Ooh, this is nice. I like it. You know, it's not hard cover, but this cover, it should be able to do it. Unless you're planning on throwing your, your, you know, notebook around and just drop kicking it down the street. I think it should be okay. This notebook is all about trying new things for me. So it's very exciting. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like I should take off this marketing material. I don't know. I'm loving this notebook. It's so clean and sleek and just something so different. It really does make me feel like I'm about to go take a class in Japan or something. These little boxes remind me a lot of having to take Chinese uh, lessons when I was a kid and really just trauma. So right now on Amazon, this notebook costs about $19.80, which is actually a little cheaper than some of these ones over here, the Loistrom, the Moleskin, um, they are a little bit more expensive. I believe like maybe five to seven dollars more expensive, which is, if you're buying a notebook, that is quite a bit. Just in terms of the price, I would say it's just a little above mid-range and definitely one you should consider if you're contemplating getting a Moleskin or a Loistrom. I do think this is a good one, but Let's put it through the ultimate test, the pen test. <laughs> Ignore all the marketing material because this is what matters the most, how it actually handles ink and all that stuff. So I got here with me a bunch of different writing utensils and uh, I'm gonna try each one and see which one is actually the best choice for this notebook or maybe none of them are. And uh, maybe we should just give up right here give up on this notebook completely, but 
before that, let's actually try it out. So the first one I have here is one of my favorite pens. I use this pretty much every day. This is the Pentel Energel Metal Ballpoint Pen. The second one is the Parker Fountain Pen with blue ink. This notebook claims to be good at handling fountain pens. I claim to be very bad at handling fountain pens. So combine that together, we will chalk it up as me being not great at it. I am a smudgy guy, I smudge. And if you're expecting this notebook to just quickly dry your ink, it won't because uh, case in point, I smudged it. The third one is the Papermate Erasable Gel Pen. This one is uh, not my favorite, but it honestly felt pretty good on this paper as well. The next one is the Bic Ultra Round Stick Grip Ballpoint Pen with blue ink. Next is the Deli Gel Pen. This pen is great if you're trying to write really fine lines. Um, that's if you want to like conserve space or anything like that. Uh, this is a good pen to choose. Finally, the Stedler Pencil. I rarely use pencils to write in this notebook, but if you do, here's how it looks. So how did it all turn out? Aside from the little mess with the fountain pen, uh, I think it performed great. In fact, my favorite pen here, the Pentel Energel, when I used it on this paper, it felt probably, I'm not exaggerating here, but one of the best I've ever seen it perform is on, with this paper. So I'm on using this fountain pen a little bit more, but I really do like this pen. An important thing to mention is that there's hardly any ghosting at all from any of these pens. And uh, I write pretty hard. The paper it performed greatly. Just if you're using a fountain pen, please give it a moment to allow it to dry, maybe write a little bit slower. I mean, if you're looking for something a little bit different, a different experience for like a few weeks, few months, however long it takes you to fill up a notebook, I think this one's a great choice. As a writer, it's important for you to find inspiration in different ways, just like how you would change your environment to write sometimes. If you say like, I need to go to a coffee shop to people watch or something, changing your actual tools can actually help with that inspiration as well. And I think a Midori MD notebook is a really good choice if you're trying to just change it up for a bit. Maybe you've been working on a novel like I am in these hardcovers and this book can be full of short stories or it could just be a journal when these ones are more creative work or whatever. My final verdict for its price, I would say it's very fair. It's a very fair um, alternative to some of these notebooks over here. If you're interested in trying this Midori notebook, there's a link in the description below. If you're interested in seeing more notebook review type videos like this one, check out this video right here. Uh, I'm Elliot. I make videos about writing and the creative process. If that interests you, subscribe. And I will see you real soon.